This is going to be episode number three of God's Game of Thrones, and we're going to talk about Lucifer, the first has been. So the first being that God gave the kingdom to is Lucifer. Remember that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, so he put together the creation for his pleasure. And sometime way back in the past, God created Lucifer as a sinless being. And in Ezekiel 28, we see a description of Lucifer. This is what he was like before Adam and Eve, before they ever came into the picture. This is what he was like during that period of time between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. Now this is Lucifer, the first has been. Ezekiel 28, 12, and 13. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So in these verses, Ezekiel is addressing Satan through the king of Tyrus. And notice it said, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. And he goes on to describe the devil in his original form as Lucifer. Many times when an athlete or singer or an actor or someone who is a great at one time, but later on they aren't as great as they once was, they're labeled a has-been. They were good, but now they aren't. They're trying to get back to the way things had been. They are a has-been. There was a time when Satan was on top. He was second to God, but now he's a has-been, trying to get back on top. The Bible is about someone trying to get a throne. And the Bible talks about the devil again in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, al I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. At one point in the past, Lucifer was allowed to be king of both kingdoms, the physical kingdom on earth and his spiritual kingdom over angels and other spiritual creatures. Notice he said in his heart in these verses, he would ascend into heaven. This shows that he was on earth. Ezekiel 28 said he was the anointed cherub that covereth. He hung around God's throne, which was most likely on earth during that time like it will be in the millennium, could be. However, he wanted to be above this throne. He wanted to exalt his throne above God's throne. Now, wherever God had his throne at this time is unknown to me, but we know that the devil wanted his throne to go above God's throne. And that's where you mess up. In your everyday life, if you're putting yourself on the throne and kicking God off the throne, that's where you mess up. You're doing the same thing as Lucifer. So Satan, as Lucifer, back then he fell positionally. But in the future, he's going to fall bodily. He fell positionally way back then before Adam and Eve because he used to be the top dog. He used to be the anointed cherub that covereth. Now he's a has-been. He had perfect in wisdom and beauty. Not anymore. You'll notice this in Ezekiel 28. If you go back there, he lost wisdom and understanding. In Ezekiel 28, 3 through 5, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches. And hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. But by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. So the devil is wiser than Daniel. 
Something interesting about this is it doesn't say wiser than Solomon. Ezekiel may have said it this way because Daniel was the wisest man of Ezekiel's day. Or are we talking about two different kinds of wisdom? Many use this to say Daniel is wiser than Solomon. However, it doesn't even say Daniel is wiser than Solomon. So did Solomon have so much wisdom that God had, had actually given him more wisdom than he gave Lucifer? To the point that Ezekiel doesn't even say thou art wiser than Solomon. He says thou art wiser than Daniel. Or is it that Lucifer just lost wisdom because he didn't retain it? To the point that he couldn't be said, it couldn't be said that he's wiser than Solomon. So you see, wisdom is a scary thing because it's something you can lose. In Proverbs 3.18, it says, She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. Lucifer lost wisdom, and he lacks understanding. Because Job 28.28 28 says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord is, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So the, the devil, he used to have the most perfect wisdom. He was perfect in wisdom. Was it that he's the wisest that ever lived, or did he lose some? Obviously, he lost something in his mind that he had before. Something went south when he was trying to go north. In Ezekiel 28, 17, it says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Lucifer was so perfect that he let it go to his head. Don't let anything you have go to your head. Everything given to the devil was given by God. He wasn't like that on his own. Everything given to you was given to you by God. You weren't special on your own. So the hast been corrupted his own wisdom. He self-destructed. He was the reason for his own downfall. Next, as a hast been, he lost true riches. Ezekiel 28, 4 says, With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. At one time, Lucifer had true riches. He was in the presence of God. And he had more than just material things. The church of Laodicea believed they were rich because they are increased with goods. However, true riches is a relationship with God. Once the devil lost that, he lost true riches. Once you lose that, you lose true riches. The church of Smyrna didn't have anything, but God said they were rich. As it says in Revelation 2, 9, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. So being rich doesn't have to do with how much money you have. It's how close you are to God. But notice that Lucifer has a heart problem. He says things in his heart that shows he isn't right with the Lord God. Ezekiel 28, 5 says his heart was lifted up because of his riches. Even though he saw God face to face around the throne, he has great power, and with great power comes great responsibility. The fact that Lucifer the saw the Lord on the throne and was with him in that close of fellowship as the anointed cherub and yet chose to rebel against God is the most wicked act you could commit. If God has saved you and given you a Bible and opened your eyes to some things, then it's far worse for you to turn your back on God and get into sin than it is for a lost person. You've been shown too much. Ezekiel twenty-eight, thirteen and 14 says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets. And of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou wast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Notice the phrases, thou wast, and thou hast. He wants to get back to what he used to be. He wants to be even above what he used to be. Ezekiel twenty-eight fifteen says, Thou wast perfect in thy ways. 
from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Notice the devil is a created being. It says, he was perfect from the days that he was created. He, he hasn't always been here. He is an eternal. Why would the creation, why would something of the creation think he should be above his creator? Why would man worship and serve the creation over the creator? Why do you sit on the throne of your heart instead of letting the creator sit on the throne of your heart? The Lord created the devil and uses him just like a puppet. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Job 26, 13 says, By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hands hath formed the crooked serpent. The devil is a created being, God is light years more powerful and ahead of the devil. More so than you're more powerful than an ant. Even more, way more so than that. But now back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28, 16 and 17. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. So the devil couldn't humble himself. He didn't want to humble himself to be exalted as the Bible talks about in Matthew 23, 12, which says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. If you want God to use you and to be rewarded, then you need to get low. You need to be humble. The devil wanted to get higher and higher. And what happens usually when a person gets full of themselves, they fall. As the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Galatians 6, 3, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Before Satan sinned, he was a king, but he couldn't be satisfied. The Lord blessed him as king over the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven refers to that physical kingdom, not the third heaven. Remember that. So Lucifer or Satan, was not an angel. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. He was in the presence of God right next to the throne. And Lucifer would have had more of an understanding, understanding of God than any being. He was sinless when he was created. He was a son of God because he was created sinless. And we will talk about sons of God more soon. But God made him king over the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And we know he was a king because he had a throne. And Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Then Genesis 1.2 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I believe there is a gap of time between those first two verses of the Bible. However, in this gap, Lucifer was allowed by God to reign as king over the kingdom of heaven on earth, a physical and visible kingdom, and at this time he was also king of the kingdom of God because he had sons of God under him, which are talked about in Job 38, 6 through 7. But the angels and other angelic beings are sons of God because they were created sinless. They are spirits with Lucifer being sinless and being over sinless spirit beings like this. It made him king of the kingdom of God. So Satan, as a king, yet under God's authority, wants to be the greatest. And he makes the first move in God's game of thrones when he tries to overtake the Lord's throne. However, no one can take the Lord's throne. It says in Psalms 93, 2, Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. God was on the throne before Lucifer was even created. So because of Satan's pride and jealousy, he loses the kingdom of heaven. And since he sinned, he can no longer 
be over the kingdom of God. God wipes out the earth with the flood described in 2 Peter 3, 5, which happened way before Noah's flood. And this destroyed the original creation and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God recreates the earth and gets a new king. So the rest of the Bible, you will see Lucifer, now Satan, trying to get back on the throne and overtake God's throne. This is why he cares about what man is doing. But now, since Satan was the anointed cherub, it would make sense for our next study to be on the cherubim to get a further understanding of Lucifer.